I worked on the MHI compressor project and it consisted of a campus project with multiple buildings. One of the buildings, the assembly building, is an 87,000 square foot building and it contains seven cranes ranging in size from 5 metric tons to 30 metric tons. Well, there was also a larger crane that was a 300 metric ton crane with a 75 ton auxiliary hook. The cranes included various features such as micro speed and inching and true vertical lift. We also took safety into consideration and installed anti-collision features. Well, because we were installing so many cranes, we actually had to take into consideration um, the cranes into the design itself. So what that meant was we, we factored in the weight of the crane, which was 375,000 pounds, plus the load capacity of that crane, which was 300 metric tons. So that really dictated a lot of uh, how the structure functioned and looked. We worked closely with the owner to understand their processes and what their needs were for the, the crane themselves. Um, by understanding what the crane clearances were needed to be, plus the hook heights, that informed us what the bay widths and the total building height needed to be. While well, understanding what the lead times were on this crane, uh, we were able to work with the designers to create an opening in the roof uh, so that we could actually install the crane into two installations. Uh, this allowed us to compress the schedule by at least a month. By understanding the weight and length of the cranes, we were able to plan out the travel path for this delivery. We needed to make sure that all the roads could handle the weight of the crane, along with having the correct turning radiuses for the truck itself. Because of the load and the frequency of the 300 ton crane, Thermite welding was utilized to create a seamless and continuous rail. From a quality assurance, quality control standpoint, it started at fabrication. Both the fabricator and the erector had to be AISC certified. In addition to AISC, we were held to CMAA standards. So some of the CMAA standards that we were held to were crane rail straightness, elevation, and span from rail to rail. In order to ensure the tolerances were met for the CMAA standards, we had a third party surveyor on site. We had them check the leveling nuts prior to us setting the columns, and we had them check the column elevations afterwards. That ensured that our elevation was correct. In addition to the third party surveyor, the crane provider also had an inspector on site checking span, elevation, and straightness prior to the rail going in place. All of these quality assurance measures ensured that we were seamless, correct, and within tolerance. So in preparation for the crane coming to the site, we broke the installation up in two sets. The crane girders went up first and then the hoist and trolley came in second. To prepare the site for the crane girders, we had to widen the entrance to account for the turn radius of the 18-wheeler. In preparation for the crane girders, we left a portion of the tilt walls out in order to back an 18-wheeler into the building. At that point, we were able to tandem pick the crane girders in place. So once tilt wall erection was complete, we were able to pick the hoist and trolley through a designed opening in the roof from the outside of the building with the same crane that we erected the tilt wall panels with. As part of the commissioning of the crane, we performed a load test. The load test was 125% of the crane's maximum capacity, which came out to about 826,000 pounds. In order to achieve this load test, we brought in plates that were rated at 27,000 pounds each. We load tested the crane, brought the weight up into the air, we checked for deflection of the crane girder, and then we ran it back and forth the entire length of the crane rail and back and forth north and south along the crane girder. The 300 metric ton crane was the largest overhead traveling crane installed in the U.S. in 2014. By working closely with the owner, designer, and subcontractors, Turner was able to successfully complete the project and have seven fully functional cranes.